For Creamer Media's Polity, I'm Tracy Hancock. Researcher and analyst Professor Raymond Sutner joins me for Sutner's View, a weekly commentary on South Africa's political scene. Hi, Raymond. Hi. South Africa lives under one of the most democratic constitutions in the world. Do conditions of freedom in fact prevail? Uh, well, you know, constitutionally, conditions of freedom do prevail, but uh, there are certain things that happen which uh, make one feel that one is not operating in total freedom. If, for example, you are um, protesting against something of the ANC and the government, you may find that you experience certain forms of harassment. Now, the DA may not experience this a lot, although one of the DA protesters in town was beaten up by the MK Veterans Association. But what I think is happening is that people are hampered by certain experiences of intimidation, which some of which are reported, others of which happen in the cover of darkness. And I think also our democracy is impacted on by uh, questions of security. In terms of the intimidation, um, the, a lot of people have found when they protest that the way in which they are confronted is not always lawful. For example, uh, there's the Shack Dwellers movement in Durban, Abakhale, Bas and John Dolo. Uh, they have re repeatedly faced unlawful evictions and there have been attacks and murders and very seldom, there have been one or two cases, but very seldom have the police apprehended uh, those who are responsible for these acts. Um, there have also been uh, informal acts of, of repression, for example, uh, the recent um, stealing of computers of the SABC in Parliament. Now, the uh, Parliament has been now been made into a fortress since the EFF was protesting in Parliament. It's like a fortress. So to get in there without breaking doors and just take away computers is not an ordinary theft. You know, when you go and you take away the coffee machine, say, or something like that. Maybe you can put it to use in a restaurant you want to open or something like that. But with computers, it's a problem. Now, I myself have experienced some of this uh, repression. In 2008, my wife and I were one of the few people who were really vocal in criticizing Zuma uh, and the rise of Zuma, what it meant in terms of repression and a number of other things. On one occasion, our gate was lifted uh, after my wife had, a, had an altercation with an ANC official. Uh, later that night, the gate was lifted. Another time, her wheels were loosened at, uh, when she got back to her car in the Rosebank Mall. On another occasion, which, as we've mentioned in public, it's in the Mail and Guardian a few years ago, uh, in 2008, uh, people entered our house. They disarmed the beams and went over the balcony and took only computers. When I came on the scene, I was hit with an al aluminum ladder and I was found uh, bleeding by my wife on the floor. Now, we understood this not to be an ordinary burglary because they didn't try to take television or anything like that. And I, from the time when I was involved, I did have contacts in intelligence and things like this. And I phoned one of these people and I said, look, this has happened. Am I being paranoid? Or does this sound to you like something that's not an ordinary burglary? And he agreed with me, it wasn't an ordinary burglary. And he put me in touch with a crime intelligence person and they assigned someone to deal with this. The person who came was obviously not from the Oval Police Station, although they said 
he said he was from Yeovil Police Station. He was very um, sophisticated in a way which was more so than the ordinary detective that's dealing with an ordinary offence. And he saw us a few times and we were very impressed with him, but he could not uncover anything. We later came to know informally that people were aware, people in government were aware that this had happened. So, and that type of um, attack, not necessarily assaulting someone, because maybe they didn't intend to assault, maybe they just tended to take the computers. But that stealing of computers has actually happened to quite a few people. People who are researching things that are sensitive to the government, which uh, will reveal things that uh, they don't want to be revealed. So I think we have a problem in South Africa where um, have a problem where uh, the freedom that we are entitled to is actually undermined by intimidation and uh, it's very hard for one to have confidence in the authorities to address these matters. For example, there's this report now of the arrest of a person who planned to kill 18 officials uh, connected with state capture and all of this. And when you read this report, it's just fake news. I mean, the people who are on the list are the Guptas and Zuma and all of this. It's like what they've just invented to distract attention from real intimidation. Now, when you, when people laugh at the action of law enforcement agencies and they don't take it seriously, you feel vulnerable. And I think that's one of the problems with the freedoms that we enjoy. We all can vote and things like that. But our freedom to organize, from the time of the rise of Zuma, there were attacks on opposition parties like COPE. And that uh, resort to violence is always potentially there. And how important do you consider the secrecy that prevails in some aspects of government? Um, you know, I think we've got a problem in the sense that there are a range of things that we are not uh, hearing about and they take a lot of trouble to keep these things secret and they can involve a considerable expenditure. And this was exposed very clearly in the Western Cape Court's decision on nuclear energy this week when they set aside completely the um, uh, all the uh, the agreements that they had entered into and we have to ask why is there the secrecy and in a climate where we are aware of a lot of deals that have been done that have been fraudulent <coughs> or procurement that has been improper and not, has not followed procedures, we have to be suspicious. And I don't have confidence in a man like the Minister of Intelligence who uh, spends his time in a massage parlor in uh, Pumalanga with a man who is known as a rhino poacher. Now, what sort of intelligence are we getting? This is the same person who acted illegally in auth authorizing the blocking of signals out of Parliament, where there was, it was completely unconstitutional. So you have this um, unreliability of the individuals who hold very important offices, like the head of the Hawks who has been removed, or main, on the way to being removed in Clemesa. You have uh, people like, um, you people, people like this, and I think uh, we have to have confidence that the forces of law and order are there to protect us, not to actually undermine our freedoms. Personally, I don't have that confidence at this time. Thanks, Raymond. Thanks a lot. That was Professor Raymond Sutner speaking to Creamer Media's Polity about whether our political climate is conducive to freedom.